mwaka wa 1954 nilikuwa bila hamisho hapo kwa kwa, kwa tabere detention as part of occupying them they were made to develop this irrigation scheme the same people from 1954 were used to open up those areas where they were used to dig canals ndugu yangu mkubwa ambaye alikufa 1978 alikuwa angirikacha people died but you see it's not that they are being killed but they are being overworked maybe starved and malaria was a big problem again Mwea aromatic rice is the best quality rice produced in Kenya. It is arguably the best that can be found in shops and supermarkets shelves around the country. Almost all Kenyans are familiar with this rice produced in the Mwea irrigation scheme in Kirinyaga County. But not every Kenyan is familiar with the nostalgic links between the leading rice brand and the history of Kenya's struggle for independence from British colonial domination. The colonial masters, they were using these people in order to make them, to punish them, but also to, to do some infrastructure. The history of Mwea is intertwined with Kenya's own independence history. It was one of the places where Mau Mau freedom fighters were detained and used for forced labor. 1953 Watu wakaanza kushikwa. Hapa hapa karibu na Kanjurui ambako kulikuwa na detention ya mbele. Seven concentration camps dotted the fields surrounding the current location of Mwea town with tens of thousands of detainees. The concentration and detention centers were located here for one main reason. Hakufungia watu wa maumau. Watu wakafungwa. And detention za kufunga watu hawa wa maumau hapa Mwea zilikuwa saba. Muingereza akaona sasa Nimepata baabusu ya buri nitatengeneza mashamba ya mpunga By 1949 the British were convinced that the area was suitable for rice farming and they started setting up test plots to conduct further trials The pilot project continued until the early 1950s when the first crop was harvested from the trial plots When the Mau Mau war started, the colonial government imposed the 1952 Emergency Act. Operations were then conducted against the freedom fighters, and the fighters who were captured by the British were sent to the detention camps in Mwea. They were forced to dig canals and level the land in Tebere, the original section of the Mwea irrigation scheme. As the clamor for independence increased in magnitude, more Kenyans joined the armed struggle. It resulted in more detentions that in turn brought in more detainees being sent to work in the Mwea irrigation project. Wengine hata walitoka huko wakiwa hawana macho. Wengine walikuwa na ile miti ya miguu ime pigwa hata na Mzee Zakayo Kiarie Nanga lives here in Gadagariri village with his wife Wamboi and his several children and grandchildren. He was among the detainees who were forced to work in the establishment of Moya irrigation scheme was brought to Mwea in 1954 after he was arrested by the colonial government in Kiambu. Kutoka huko tawata karoti pale maji inatokea hapo. Tulikuwa tunashimba 
kwa mutaro tukua kwa kwa detain walikuwa kila siku akisimba kama moja after detention he became part of a group of 208 laborers who lived in a camp in Karaba they were paid a small stipend to build Gadigiriri village near the Gadigiriri prison where he was detained in 1954 and 1955. They were later joined by another 78 laborers also from Kiambu who were also paid a small stipend for their work. <laughs> After they finished building the village, they were deployed to clear and level the fields in Tebere. They were also allocated two acre farms in 1959 with strict guidelines to be followed. Ikawa sasa, yale mashamba ambayo ya mesha kuwa tayari. Iwekwe maji, watu wajaribu kulima. Na wakati hiyo, godi nali mashamba, you want to put your bag, your patrolza, your magunia, tamba kushona, na rangi. So NIB used to work backwards. Yeah, you have employees, you have your recurrent expenditure. So you work backwards. You say my our salary is this, our whatever is this, our whatever is this. Then you work backwards. Then you tell the farmers that this rice which you have to give us, we can only pay you so much. After harvesting, all the yield was handed over to the board which determined the prices and deducted the cost of the supplies given to the farmer in advance. Lakini watu wengine wakati hiyo matumizi ya inalingana na ya board wanakuwa niyo. Unaweza kulima tena farmer was left with just a few bags of rice for personal consumption. His wife Wamboi Kiare recalls the early days of the scheme when the first groups of people migrated from neighboring regions to Mwea. They all had come to try their luck in getting pieces of land to farm rice. Alisema kwa mama yangu. Alisema kutokuje tupande msere. Tukakuja. Sasa hizi kwa hiyo tulikuwa watoto mimi nilikuwa mtoto. Aya nakuja tunakaa na baba yangu na mama yangu. She came with her father as a young girl. In the process met Nanga who was single and had his own farm. She recalls the days when she had the responsibility to make sure that the bags of rice they were allocated from what they produced lasted until their next harvest season. Wakati tunavuna pale daraja palikuwa askari watatu. Kujine hivi hivi hivi. Hata hata siwezi kusema ni kitu gani. Hiyo maisha malikuwa gumu. Cup 347 gave the National Irrigation Authority powers and authority to define who was to decide in the scheme what he was supposed to grow, when he was supposed to grow it, where he was supposed to sell it. However, not all the farmers who came to Mwea during the early years were Mau Mau detainees. According to the National Authority Chief Executive Officer Gitonga Mugambi, many came after 1953 when the colonial government asked chiefs in other parts of central kenya outside of kerinyaga county to forward a list of people to work for cash in order to increase the number of people working in the project the government of the day found it is important to have these people settled in those areas which they were in the first place being forced to yeah and at the same time also you know so the whites had started settling them there in order never to go back where they had been removed so that the white settlers can remain there and that is that's how it happened that's how we we, we earned 
Mwea irrigation scheme and settlement. Yeah? And, and that's why you find if you go to a place like Mwea, you find people from all over the, world, the country. The colonial administration started allocating farms to the local Kirinyaga residents only after 1957. When Kenya gained independence from the British in 1963, the Mwea irrigation project was taken over by the government of Kenya and it has been treated as a flagship project by each successive administration. The National Irrigation Authority, previously called the National Irrigation Board, wholly managed the scheme until the late 1990s when it handed some roles to the farmers. The law has given farmers a lot of power to determine irrigation activities in this country and also to create an element of capacity building, whereby, as an institution, we do the capacity building, of which now is, is a way of empowering these farmers. Initially, in the old law, farmers' activities were very limited. But now this one recognizes farmer as the real farmer, and the government, through the authority, as a facilitator. Mwea irrigation scheme in the expansive flat areas of Kirinyaga County has grown from the initial small scale to its current acreage of 26,000 acres. It falls under the two sub-counties of Mwea East and Mwea West, benefiting more than 54,000 people. But the scheme currently has um, about 11,000 households. So, and uh, each household within around here is approximately five, six people, so you can see those are about 54,000 direct beneficiaries uh, currently from this scheme. The manager of the Moya Irrigation Scheme Authority, engineer Innocent Ariemba, says water for the scheme is abstracted from Nyamindi and Tiba rivers using a gravity system into canals that supply the farms. Uh, of course, open channels, which are lined to some extent, about 30% of the primary and uh, secondary canals are lined, the rest are, are just other canals. So we produce rice, uh, mainly basmat rice, uh, which is a premium uh, rice variety in the Kenyan market. And um, as, I, as I indicated, we have about 26,000 acres currently. The scheme produces 114,000 metric tons of basmati rice variety per year. This is equivalent to 60% of the total rice produced in the country. The rice value chain also supports numerous other enterprises that also add billions of shillings to the local economy. There are people um, providing support services like uh, land preparation uh, to prepare uh, the 26,000 acres within one month um, at a, an average of about 6,000 per, per acre. That costs about a quarter, bil, a quarter billion Kenyan shillings. Engineer Ariemba estimates that the rice value chain is valued at between 9 billion shillings and 11 billion shillings per year. Of course, as you can see from uh, within this area, especially at a time like, like now when people are harvesting, there's quite a lot of activity. Uh, we have um, almost all the banks within within Mwea town, Gruban town. So that confirms that uh, there's quite a lot of uh, money circulation uh, within the area. Rice consumption in Kenya currently stands at 250,000 metric tons. The government plans to meet this deficit by replicating what is happening in Mwea. Besides managing the water system of the irrigation project, the National Irrigation Authority also runs the Mwea Rice Mills, which provides quality milling services to the farmers. All the rice which was produced here used to be made and marketed by National Irrigation Board. During the colonial period, there was no rice mill, and the harvests were processed manually. The Mwea Rice Mills was opened in 1969 by Mzee Jomo Kenyatta to mill the rice produced in Mwea Tebere Irrigation Scheme, as the scheme was called at that time. As we continued, my National Irrigation Board, as it used to be called, was able to expand the scheme to Wamomo, Karaba, and Ofuba. 
so the section became five. Mwea rice mill was the only rice mill in Mwea until the late 1990s when rice farmers demanded for liberalization and shortly after, many private rice mills were set up in the town. So, somehow the volume of pandi which used to come here went down. And the company also, uh, the company's activities also went down. So the management of National Education Board, together with that one of Moya Rice Mills, they skewed down. In 2012, the Moya Rice Mills got a new lifeline when it entered into a partnership with the National Cereals and Produce Board, NCPB, to mill on their behalf rice paddy from local farmers. Mze Kenyatta also oversaw the construction of the Moya Irrigation Road to improve accessibility and movement within the project. The scheme continued to thrive and the acreage under rice cultivation expanded. By the time President Daniel Arab Moi took over office in 1978, the scheme's water supply was overstretched. President Moi oversaw the overhaul of the infrastructure of water system, including the construction of new waterworks and canals. To oversaw the overhaul of the mill in 1996, replacing the old one with two new milling plants. President Moi also initiated the plan to construct a dam on Thiba Dam, but the project could not be started owing to local disputes. <laughs> Under the administration of President Uhuru Kenyatta, Moya Irrigation Scheme has been at the top of the list of government's food security agenda. In 2014, the rice mill that was installed in 1996 was replaced with a modern and efficient model. According to the National Authority Chief Executive Officer Gitonga Mugambi, the construction of Thiba, which is expected to be completed soon, will transform Mwea Irrigation Scheme. So, we brought in Thiba Dam to assist in two areas. One, to expand the existing scheme from 25,000 acres to 35,000 acres. That's a first achievement. leo hii tuko hapa kuanzisha kirasmi ujenzi wa damu hii ya tiba we can now have two crops two seasons because of this dam Hiyo ni kumaanisha tumeongeza mchele lakini pia tumeongezea mkulima mapato. The dam is designed to stabilize the water supply system for the existing farms. For the now that the 5000 acres to have two crops per year. Which essentially means with the river dam we will be able to have 70,000 acres under production per year up from the current 25,000 acres. The National Irrigation Authority says the future of Moya Irrigation Scheme is one of more potential and productivity. The National Irrigation Board has recently been guiding farmers in embracing mechanization which has seen yields increase. The National Irrigation Authority is currently encouraging farmers to adopt mechanization in the planting phase. <laughs> Kwa mahitaji na kila siku 
Tuwe ni imara 